this is the box that I would use for the power supply. And here's another angle. You can see the box and also some transformers and a soldering iron. Here is the uh, 5 volt supply, which I did not build. It was built by a hobbyist years ago. But here's the part I built, the starting of me building it here with one regulator installed. Here's the underside of it, built on standard perf board. I built this part. Um, here's a TL783C high voltage regulator. Um, I'm not using it for high voltages, I'm just using it in place of a 317 because I had one 317 but not two of them and so I used this and a 317 for each supply and they, they work similar, similarly. Here's the uh, schematic, I got it from Aaron Cake electronic website and also a donor circuit board. So this is donor circuit board, I got some diodes off this circuit board to use in the rectifier Here's the completed uh, project, or the uh, completed uh, part with the adjustable supplies. And in the shot, you can see the big rectifier on the bottom left is the one that was salvaged, one diodes that was salvaged on that board. Underside of the board, here's the meter. Sorry, I can't keep up, keep up very well. This is a vintage meter I got at a estate sale. And here's um, the part that I didn't build, that particular board there that I mounted onto the back plate. And here's a nice view of it all assembled and ready for the top cover to go on. It's a beautiful sight, isn't it? All built by me except for that back board with the 5 volt supply built by someone else. One side it? of me is lit. <coughs> Excuse me. The other side is not. Do I look sinister? Okay, so I uh, just showed you a uh, picture show of the uh, um, supply related things. I mean, as you just saw the pictures about the power supply, homemade power supply, and uh, here's a complete. And it was built in late 2010. I think was it October or November or something or December 2010. It was. There's a the like meter that I have on it. It's, it's, it's such a nice meter. I mean, this is this video is dedicated to the power supply. That is the five volt output. The next one is the first of the uh, adjustable, and the, the last one there is the second of the adjustable. Um, the first one is incorporating the 317. The second one is incorporating the TL783C. They're both going about the same, though, because I'm not running it with high voltage. They'll go from 1.2 on the lowest voltage to about 30 volts on the high. That toggle switch in the middle will switch either the first one or the second one's voltage to be displayed on the meter and there's the corresponding knobs that have wires on them, bell wire so I can easily um, stick it onto a breadboard you know for whenever I build a uh, project I just kind of stick them in there to hold them and make sure the wires are apart so they're not shorting and so let's uh, turn this little supply on we got the first supply set to 9 volts as you can see on the meter my only complaint is that this meter isn't the most accurate meter in the world could be that the meter said it was calibrated for use on steel panels I believe the panel it's mounted on is aluminum, which I do not think responds to magnets, as I believe steel does, and I think that has to do with why the meter isn't the most accurate. It's, I made it where I adjusted the little screw, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, I keep moving the camera out of view, I'm not doing the best job filmmaking here, but... The little screw adjustment adjusts the needle itself, and um, I did a little adjusting on there, so it's a little bit more accurate, at least early on on the meter. But as you go further on, it gets less and less accurate. Like it's on, um, it's going to almost 30, but not quite. Um, I switched to the other uh, meter, and here it is. I mean, other supply to show on the meter, and I can adjust it goes to not quite to 30 it goes to a little red line on the meter I can 
little red line on the meter. I think it also goes to around 30. Um, one thing I was able to do is I was able to wire all three of these supplies in series and run a, a neon and actually make a neon light bulb light up which is pretty cool because you know neons have to have high voltage it, um, I had a little interruption from mom I paused it so but anyway um, Are they microwaved or fresh? They're microwaved. Um, I mean, they're frozen. I don't know how you fix them. Probably heat them up in the oven. I don't know. Not, not really. I guess pausing then didn't go as far as to completely um, stop the interruption. But back to what I was saying on the longer taken video. I was able to run a neon light bulb off this power supply. From what I remember I measured the voltage of all three of them in series and it was 67.7 volts. I have a digital multimeter here but it's got a dead battery. I sounded kind of like Hank Hill when I said dead battery. But um, I could, if it lasts before the display you know, cuts out I can try to tell you, I hope you can read sideways, try to tell you how high these supplies go. Okay, that's the lowest. There, at one point, I can't even get a good connection on this thing. Oh yeah, of course I have it set to 20 volts, I'm such an idiot. Have to. Got, uh, first one goes up to 33.6. 33.5 volts on the LM317, the first supply. Down to, well, 1.2, but it's not exactly accurate, I guess, on the meter. Um, the one here is um, starting at the same low voltage, 1.3 or so, and goes all the way up to 32.4, so they're almost the same. And then the 5 volt supply is sending out not the most uh, precise 5, um, it's sending out about 5.4, 5.5 volts. That shouldn't damage any uh, circuits, I don't think. It's not much difference. Um, I think the board that was the 5 volt supply had a, either a 10 or a 100 microfarad cap put after the um, regulator, which probably is the reason why. It's probably boosting the voltage up a little bit. I may need to take that cap out and uh, replace it with a, a small 0.1 microfarad or so. There's another lead, another terminal that um, I didn't address earlier except for in a different video. This one here, which is um, a ground terminal. I'm going to go ahead and uh, turn that off. If you notice also that switch is upside down. I didn't know which way it would be whenever I put it in until after I installed it and it was kind of hard to install because the little screw on thing is like t literally touching the meter. I'm sorry I got sidetracked there. I was trying to talk about this freaking terminal. Um, this terminal is a ground terminal and it goes um, onto the aluminum plate here onto the back aluminum plate and go, goes to the actual um, ground on the three-prong power cord, which um, is earth ground, I believe. It goes actually to earth ground, and that's useful for radio circuits, stuff like that, like AM radios where I have to have earth ground. I don't feel like trying to go find some cold water pipe to wrap a big amount of wire on, so instead I can hook it up to this ground right here nice and convenient. I have another power supply that you need to see. 
and it's better not be over 15 minutes or it'll have to go on my cassette 26 YouTube channel. My cassette master channel is still limited to its dumb 15 minuteness. Not as dumb as 10 minutes though, which I already exceeded. I'll have to edit out a lot of stuff here. Save time. Anyway, this is my powered project board. That term I saw years ago when looking through a catalog of electronics, like components and stuff. There was a powered project board. I had the idea it would be cool to have one. It was a breadboard of the built-in power supply. I never bought it, but I built one. I built this actually into the. I, you can't see anything. I built it in 2004. I can't believe the lighting circumstances are so limited. Um, but anyway. Yeah, geez. Gee whiz. I'm running out of time here. Can you give me a break? I built this in 2004. <sighs> Not completely by myself. I had help from someone because, um, see this metal piece and it's all you know it's bent to shape and goes on I had to have help with like using equipment and stuff to get that metal piece bent and everything sized just right to where putting the uh, holes and everything but other than that I built this device myself at 13 years of age and um it uses an LM317 positive voltage regulator and an LM337 negative voltage regulator. And all the uh, wiring is on the inside. <laughs> That's such an obvious statement. Come on. This is the um, positive control knob from 1.2 to about, I think, 18 volts. And then the other side is. 1.2 to about 18 volts and so it has the positive side ground and the negative which if the negative is used the ground is positive and you can use the negative directly with the positive to get both of these power supply voltages added together and I also need to find another one of these knobs that I can put on the other side um, I've got a neon indicator light. I like neon lights, if you don't know. And, um, yeah. Look in the inside. I can't open this up very far. Let's take that foam out. The foam helps push the heat sink up against it. I have it hot glued, but hot glue is prone to coming off. I don't have much time left. But you can see, there's the heat sink with the 337 and the LM317 on the other side. And the circuitry I did using a special style with sticky backed metal strip put onto a cardboardish kind of material. And all the components are soldered together, and it's a nice way to do circuit boards easily. Very wide tracks, but it's very easy. The downside is the uh, sticky side on those metal strips don't hold on very well and they tend to come off super easily while you're soldering because the solder, soldering iron heats up the plastic I mean the sticky, the stickiness I have the rest of the circuitry like the transformer and stuff in the side where it goes out more because it goes out that way to fit the transformer and that's my um, video on power supplies not much time left. I just thought I'm going to show the first power supply project that I built with help from my dad when he was alive. Built in 2004. Single power supply, adjustable, um, and it works. And works well. This LED burned out. This LED monitored the second, secondary side. This monitored the primary 120 volt side. Um, here's the back side. I don't know if it's 20 watts for sure or not, I approximated that. 